Hi, my documentary is about the New York Mets and how their poor fans have to deal with such a bad franchise over the years. I'll talk about the history and how many times the Mets have lost. Can you stop it? The New York Mets were created in 1962 after the Brooklyn Dodgers and San Francisco Giants left New York for California. Their colors are blue and orange to represent both the Brooklyn Dodgers and San Francisco Giants. In the 1962 was the worst season in Mets history, as they lost 120 games, which is a Major League Baseball record. Over the next seven seasons, they would win only 394 games and lose 737. They had three managers, Casey Stengel, West Westrom, and Salty Parker. Only one Hall of Famer played for the Mets in that time period. But late in 1968, when Gil Hodges took over, the Mets began to turn around with young rookies like Tom Seaver, Nolan Ryan, and Jerry Kuzman. In 1969, they began the season off very slowly, down 7.5 in July. They played a series against Chicago. During that series, in, in the second game of that series, actually, a black cat walked in front of the on-deck batter for the Chicago Cubs, stared at Chicago Cubs manager Leo DeRocher, and from there the Mets would go on to win the next three games and inevitably win the National League Eastern Division title. In the National League Championship Series, the Mets beat the Atlanta Braves four games to one, but played the heavily favored Baltimore Orioles in the World Series. But because of the Mets' young pitching from Seaver, Nolan Ryan, Kuzman, and then Seaver again, the Mets easily won the series four games to one and were titled the Amazing Mets as they won their first World Series just seven years into their young existence. In, from 1970 to 1972, the Mets had some losing years, and in 1971, Feeling that the Mets had so much pitching, they made one of the worst trades in Major League Baseball history, which turned fans again away from the Mets, which would happen so many times over the franchise's history. The Mets traded Nolan Ryan for one third baseman, Jim Fergosi, who played 60 games as a Met and then broke his finger and would never play another game with the Mets, while Nolan Ryan ended up striking out over 5,700 batters, th winning 370 games and throwing an unrivaled seven no-hitters. In 1973, the Mets were down eight and a half games in June when closing pitcher Tug McGraw said, you got to believe in the dugout after a loss to the Chicago Cubs. Then the Mets went on a run, one of the greatest second half comebacks in baseball history, fin finishing the season as the National League Eastern Division champions yet again and facing the, this time the heavily favored Oakland Athletics in the World Series. The Mets played a hard World Series, including getting in and got into two brawls, but the Mets inevitably lost the World Series four games to three. But fans had some hope that for the rest of the 1970s, the Mets would be a winning team. But they were wrong. For the next nine seasons, there was no hope for the Mets. They went 605 and 697, with Joe Torre and Joe Frazier managing the ball club. There was no hope for the Mets. They had very little Hall of Fame players except for Tom Seaver, who they ended up trading on what was known as Black Tuesday in 1977. Every Met fan put their heads down and basically cried when Tom Seaver was traded, and in his post-trade interview, he even cried. Met fans gave, all, gave up all hope on the franchise until 1982, when during the draft, the Mets took Ron Darling, Dwight Gooden, and Darryl Strawberry, and then traded for Keith Hernandez and Gary Carter, and there was a sign of hope in the Mets organization. From 1983 to 1985, the Mets increased. And in 1984, the debut of Dwight Gooden, one of the baseball's young, great pitchers, along with Fernando Valenzuela, who was on the Dodgers. They both burst onto the scene, for, fighting it off for the National League Cy Young. And then in 1986, the Mets ran full force over the whole National League and easily won. 108 games. Nonetheless, the Mets went on to play the Boston Red Sox in one of the most memorable World Series in baseball history. After losing the first two games, the Mets then took two of three in Boston and went home three game, down three games to two to Boston. In game six, it was the ninth, it was the ninth inning, three to three, and the Mets failed to score. So the game would go into extra innings. And Dave Henderson did a two-run home run to put the Red Sox up five to three and three outs away from ending the curse of the Bambino that had been on the franchise since 1918. 
The Mets were the Mets first two were retired, and the, Gary Carter then got a hit, followed by pinch hitter Kevin Mitchell, who was making plane reservations in the dugout to go home. And then Ray Knight got a hit, scoring Carter, making it five to four. And Mookie Wilson was the batter. And the possible winning run at first in Ray Knight. And here's Mookie. And it's going to go to the backstop. Here comes Mitchell to score the tying run. And Ray Knight is at second base. So the winning run is at second base with two out. Three and two to Mookie Wilson. Little roller up along first. Behind the bat. After the dramatic win in Game 6, the Mets played Game 7, and there was no chance Boston was beating them. They won 8-5 to five and won their second world title. In the 1998 season, when the Mets made a trade, they traded with the Marlins and acquired catcher Mike Piazza, who would be the face of the Mets franchise until the 2005 season. In 1999, the Mets entered the playoffs as a wild card team, beating the Reds in a one-game playoff. Todd Pratt had one of the Mets' greatest moments by hitting a home run to send them to the 1999 National League Championship Series. Only to lose four games to two to the Braves. In 2000, the Mets were back again as a threat and won the National League wild card yet again. Bobby Valentine was the first Mets manager to lead them to the playoffs in two straight seasons in franchise history. The Mets went and beat the Giants, led by MVP Jeff Kent and home run slugger Barry Bonds, three games to one. And in the NLCS, they beat Mark McGuire's St. Louis Cardinals four games to one to send the Mets to the 2000 World Series against the New York Yankees. Yankees. For the first time in 44 years, two New York teams were playing each other in the World Series. The Mets, though, lost to the Yankees four games to one, huh. only winning game three huh. behind Rick Reed. That was until 2006, when they returned in full swing. The Mets had the best record in baseball and easily won the National League East for the first time in 18 years. They swept the Dodgers three games to nothing and then faced the team who had the worst record in baseball history to make the playoffs, 83-win St. Louis Cardinals against the 97-win New York Mets. Number four, Andy Chavez. There is Diaz. Fastball hit in the air to left field. That's deep. Back goes Chavez. Back near the wall. Leaping and he made the catch. He took a home run away from Rowland. Trying to get back to first Edmonds. He's doubled off. And the inning is over. Andy Chavez saved the day. He reached high over the left field wall. He went to the apex of his leap and caught it in the webbing of his glove with his elbow up above the fence. A miraculous play by Andy Chavez, the play of the year, the play maybe of the franchise history. In 2007, the Mets were back. Same team, couple of additions, no real minuses. Hmm. They had a seven and a half game lead with 17 games to play in 2007. Wow. And this was the beginning of the end for most Mets fans. Hmm. Still is. Selling out almost 75% of their home games in both 2006 and 2007, the Mets embarked on the worst collapse in baseball history, failing to make the playoffs to being up seven games with 17 to play. The Mets did not sell out a game in 2008, with little fans showing up to the game. The Mets again took a three-game lead with 12 to play and blew that lead as well. What else is now? 2009, they opened up a new stadium, City Field. Two years ago. 
and failed to win more than 72 games. Ouch. $100 million of their... $100 million of their payroll was on the disabled list. Waste of money. 2010, very little hope came out of Met fans. Once again. And there was reason for that. The Mets failed to make the playoffs again.